Hello, welcome back. Today I wanted to talk a bit about sort of the just UI design of the uh, web browser mode within Flashpoint Secure Player. Uh, and I'm recording my entire screen now so that I can demo it. Um, if we look at the form here, you'll see it's a very no-frills design. Uh, it's just got back, forward, stop, refresh, the address bar, uh, and then we have save as web page, print, new window, and a feature I insisted on including even though nobody asked for it, which is full screen. And then down here we have the status bar as well as progress. And that's it. It's, it's very, you know, basic stuff. Um, it used to be even more basic. It used to be that it's just it was just the web browser and there was no toolbar or anything. Uh, but people didn't really like that. And, you know, I, I understand people don't really like memorizing hotkeys. So uh, I eventually caved and created the toolbar although it was uh, a substantial effort, mostly for full screen, but <laughs> I'll get there. Um, but if you look at you know most of the buttons, most of them are just simple, because they're just simple calls into the web browser control. So like, <clears throat> um, you press the back button, just checks the browser exists, and it calls go back. That's it, it's a single line of code. Again, you press the forward button, uh, and it's just, you know, go forward, and you go forward, yay. You know, it's a single um, line of code again. Um, <clears throat> and so most of these are like this. Browser The, the browser go button is a little bit interesting uh, in that it uses the same get validated URL function that I uh, discussed in the previous video, but other than that, it just calls navigate. Uh, and then, you know, same for save as and print. The only reason I threw them into the interface in the first place is just because they're really easy, right? Uh, it's just a single line of code. Maybe there's some game somewhere that uses printables, uh, and so now you can print them. It's a single line of code hooray, right? Um, then we get into the ones which are a little bit more complex, which is new window and full screen. So new window isn't too bad. Um, new window, we create a new instance of the form, and we show it. That much is obvious. Um, <clears throat> but then we return that web browser form, because if we look at where this is actually used, this is used in an event, um, and this has like a slightly weird looking name. Uh, this is actually short for shell document viewer. So it's shell document viewer web browser new window to. Um, so what's up with this? What, what's, what is this event, right? Well, this event is actually here <clears throat> because this is not something that the web browser control normally exposes in C Sharp. Um, normally, uh, when you go to create a new window, let me actually demo this. Um, oh yeah, and this is not going to, it's going to show this error message because, um, just because I don't have Flashpoint open, but it's, it's working. Uh, it just, yeah, this is just like the page for if I don't have Flashpoint open, so it's not going to be able to fulfill the request, but whatever. Um, so this is this is the browser interface, right? And there's a few interesting things going on. Uh, you know, I can it starts maximized, but you can make it smaller, you can resize it. Uh, the address bar resizes when I resize it, which actually is not a default Windows Forms thing. Um, that actually had to be done custom, because normally you just set the pixel width of the text box, and then that's it, and that's its size. So I'll talk about that in a bit. Um, but to get back on track here, uh, we have this new window button. It opens a pop-up. You know, you can press it multiple times. Um, <clears throat> but the important thing here is that we can actually do it from JavaScript. So if I type in, like, JavaScript window.open, and then just void zero so it doesn't redirect, um, then <clears throat> we also get a pop-up, and that's not the default behavior of the web browser control. Usually, when that happens, the web browser control will open an instance of Internet Explorer, um, but I've wired it up here so that it will open the pop-up. In a similar vein, if I do JavaScript window.close then that will also, that'll close that window. Um, so <clears throat> this is good for, for games that, that uh, expect to open in a pop-up window. Also note, um, no tabs 
There's no tabs in this. There's just Windows. The type of games that uh, this is intended for are probably going to expect Windows anyway instead of tabs. Uh, so I didn't bother with tabs. This is like the bare minimum basic that you need, uh, basics design that you need for a browser to work. It just has Windows, right? So, <clears throat> so yeah. So the default thing for a web browser control to do if uh, window.open is called, is to open Internet Explorer, which I don't want. I want it to open the same browser, right? Um, so you can see up here, um, I assign a bunch of events, like um, there's an event for if the document title changed, or if the status bar text changed, so I can update the status bar, right? Uh, and these are just normal web browser control things. Um, I also have events for when the web browser closes and is painted. I'll talk about that maybe in a, a later video and what that's about, because those are custom. Those are not uh, built into Windows Forms either. Uh, but then we have this. So <clears throat> we have this weird cast happening here where we take the ActiveX instance of the web browser control <clears throat> and then we cast it to a shell document viewer web browser and then assign events to it. And this is simply because these events are not normally exposed by uh, WinForms. So we have to cast it to a shell document viewer, which is the actual, um, the actual, like, uh, ActiveX control that is working underneath the web browser control. And we cast it to that, and then we assign these events. And this will tell us stuff like, when a new window is created. In, in IE5, it's new window 2. In IE6, it's new window 3. Uh, and, and IE6 and all later versions. Um, it'll tell us when the uh, window has been moved, like with JavaScript's window.move2, so we can do that. And it'll also tell us if the window is resizable. This is an interesting thing as well. <clears throat> when you call window.open, you can set a property of that specifies whether or not the window should be resizable. Um, and if it's not resizable, then you shouldn't be able to like click and drag the bottom right to resize it. Uh, so we'll take a look at that in a bit. Uh, and then we just have ones for downloads beginning and completing. This is you know for the progress bar on the bottom right. Uh, and all of this is stuff that you can't normally do with the web browser control. You have to do this sort of uh, funky cast to uh, to a shell document viewer in order to access these events. Yeah, the uh, the web browser control is really gimped. Like, it, it honestly is kind of silly how much it can't do. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> we can ultimately do it. We just have to do this weird cast here. Um, so if we look at the new window three event, which is the new one, um, this actually just calls into new window two because the only difference is that we get uh, a bunch of other stuff, like the URL of the page that will open, uh, but we don't actually care about that. So <clears throat> we just go straight into uh, new window 2. This is where the actual implementation is. And this is where this little handoff happens, because we've just opened a new window, right? If we look back at this function, we've opened a new window uh, as a form, but Internet Explorer, or, or the web browser control, it has no way of knowing uh, that that window we just opened is the one that we want it to use as the new window, right? And it has to know that in order to set its URL and stuff, right? So when we use this function, um, we get this property, uh, the pointer to the pointer to display. This just gives us the ActiveX instance of that form, right? And so that way, um, it knows. That way, it knows uh, where the where the new browser window is, so it can set up the sort of JavaScript relationship between e each window. Um, yeah, and then also you can you can cancel uh, pop up windows here. Um, like, I guess you could use this to like add block or something, but. In Flashpoint, we don't care about that, so just cancel false. And that's it. You know, that's how we open a new window. So not too bad. It's more complex than the uh, the functions where it's just like a single line of code. But it's still, you know, fairly uh, simple. 
Um, <clears throat> and then there's full screen. So let me find the so browser full screen. Right, okay. So we click the full screen button and we end up in this browser full screen function. And I've turned this into like a getter and setter property. So this sets the full screen to be the opposite of what it currently is because it's the toggle, right? So if we go into this getter property, this is by far, uh, or getter and setter, this is by far the uh, most advanced um, function here. And let me actually just demo full screen because there's a bunch of interesting things that happen when we enter full screen. So if I click this full screen button, a few interesting things happen. The um, toolbar and status bar disappear, and we also have a label uh, which says press F11 to exit full screen. Now, no other browser does this, um, but I put it in there because I know that Flashpoint users are special and that they will find a way to enter full screen without knowing how to exit. So um, I, you know, give them this reminder, you can press F11 to exit full screen, and it just disappears after a few seconds. You can also use Alt plus Enter, that works equally well. Um, or you can mouse up to the top of the screen, that'll get the toolbar to reappear, right? Um, so if I mouse up to the top and I, I hover over this, you can see the full screen button is now highlighted, indicating that I am in full screen. Uh, and if I click on that, now we'll be back out of it. Um, <clears throat> so quite a few ways that you can get into and out of full screen, because I don't want users to, to get lost. As smooth as that uh, operation looks, there's actually quite a bit that has to happen to make this possible. So in Windows, there isn't actually any function that you just call to make a window full screen. The qualifier for a window being full screen is that it doesn't have a border around it, and that the dimensions of the window exactly match that of the screen size, which you can accomplish by simply maximizing a window that doesn't have a border on it, right? <clears throat> so in this full screen function, um, we do that, and there's actually a bunch more that has to happen, too. So we just do some basic, like, null checks up front here, and then we find that we're going to have to enter full screen. So the first thing we do is we back up the form border style. The reason for this is because, as I mentioned before, the window might be resizable or it might not be. And so the form border style might be for a resizable window or not. So we have to remember that for when we exit full screen again. So we save that to a variable. And then we get something called the window placement. Now, in Windows, there's actually a couple different ways to maximize a window. You can use um, the regular function for it, which I believe is called uh, set window state. Um, which just maximizes the window and or, or makes it normal or whatever, but it doesn't do anything else. Um, but you can also use uh, set window placement, which is what I'm using here. And the nice thing about window placement is that it also guarantees that when you uh, exit full screen again, in this case, um, the window will be in the same position as it was before you entered. So, for example, now that I've made the window small, if I enter full screen and exit again, it'll be in the same place. If I move it over, resize it, enter full screen, exit, it'll be in the same place. Uh, and I can have a guarantee that will be the case because window placement stores the state, or, or the show command, um, which is, which is what actually you know maximizes it, but it also stores the position in these other properties. It stores them together uh, as one unit. So I can be sure that when I exit, it'll be in the same place. The other thing that's nice about window placement is that it doesn't show the animation for maximizing a window. Because uh, on Windows 10, this is so fast that you, you don't even really notice it, but it's especially noticeable on Windows 7. When you maximize a window, it has like a little animation of it getting bigger. And it looks really weird for full screen. So sort of a nice undocumented side effect of window placement that I can also take advantage of here 
is it doesn't show that little animation that you would normally get if you set the window state with just set window state. And so I want both of these advantages, and so I use the window placement instead of just the regular uh, set window state. <coughs> now, right off the bat, uh, you'll notice something weird here, which is that we're setting the window to be normal first, and then taking off the border and then maximizing it. And this is just because, right, if the window is already maximized, and we set the state to maximized, it's not going to do anything, right? It's just going to leave it like it currently is. So so what you actually have to do, right, is you have to make the window smaller, then take off the border, and now maximizing it is going to make it take up the full screen dimensions, and so it's going to make it like a full screen window. Um, so that's the reason I do that, and um, again, you know, um, this is part of why I want to skip the animation, because it just looks really weird going down to a normal window and a maximize window, but with this, it's instant, so you don't notice it. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, we make the window normal, we take off the border, because that is a requirement of it being a full screen window, and then we maximize it, that's going to make it take up the full screen dimensions, so Windows hides the taskbar because it considers it a full screen window. And then <clears throat> we do the hiding of toolbar, we check the full screen button on, uh, we hide the status bar, and, and all that. Now, just programmer instinct um, would tell you to do this before entering full screen. It doesn't really matter because it happens instantly, so you would never notice it. But I think a typical programmer would hide this first, so they would do this up here, right? They would hide this first, and then they would set the window placement. Um, but you actually can't do that, because if you do that, it creates this very lovely bug that I will now demonstrate. So, <clears throat> so you can see, um, I'm going to restore down the window so that it's uh, smaller, right? And now I'm going to enter full screen, and it looks normal, right? But if I move my mouse up to the top, the toolbar doesn't show up until I move it further left, and now it shows up. Um, and this happens every time, right? Until, until it's shown up at least once. Um, so the reason that this lovely bug happens is because, right, we are making the toolbar invisible, and then we're resizing the window. And because the toolbar is invisible when you resize the window, as an optimization, it's like, well, I don't have to resize right now um, because, <coughs> um, because I'm invisible. I don't have to resize. So I'm just going to wait until I'm visible to resize, right? But the problem with that is that now, um, when I go up there to, to, to mouse over this, my mouse is not actually in the bounds of the toolbar. The toolbar is actually over here uh, on the left. It's just invisible. And so when I'm over here on the right mousing up, uh, I'm not actually mousing over the toolbar, so it never receives that event. Uh, and so it never can become visible again. Um, and so you have to do this after. You have to resize the window and then set this to invisible. Then it'll be the correct size already, so when you mouse up, it'll um, it'll actually be in the bounds of it, and so it'll, it'll get that event uh, that makes it visible. Uh, so that's uh, another, you know, just a dumb thing about this. Uh, we have to do just a lot of stuff to make the full screen work. It isn't just like a single line of code like all the other buttons. Um, <clears throat> and then um, we have this. Uh, so we set up a Windows hook, uh, which sounds big and scary, but this is actually the thing that makes it so that when I mouse up to the top of the screen, uh, the toolbar shows up. And if you're familiar with Windows hooks, you might think that that's overkill. You might think, why am I using a Windows hook uh, instead of just using like a pre-filter message, um, or even just like the mouse over events in WinForms, right? But I assure you, there's actually a very good reason why I'm using a low-level hook here instead of a uh, pre-filter message. Uh, it's not just because I don't know what I'm doing and I just use the most overkill method, method 
because uh, I actually had to use this for a very good reason, and I'll talk about that in the future. But for now, you know, just know this is what makes it so that when I mouse up to the top of the screen, um, the toolbar appears. And then, <clears throat> finally, um, we show the exit full screen label that shows up, and then we bring the window to the front, uh, which is just, you know, so that there's nothing else in front of us when we enter full screen. Um, <clears throat> the timer is actually a bit interesting. Uh, maybe I'll talk about that in a future video, too. Um, but just to, like, briefly explain uh, some interesting things about the uh, the exit full screen label. So <clears throat> when you enter full screen, this label shows up. It shows up for three seconds because I figured that was enough time to read it. Um, but you can also get it to go away by just interacting with uh, the page at all. So if I click on this, it'll go away. If I click anywhere on the page, it'll go away. If I press like a key on the keyboard, it'll go away uh, earlier than it normally would. Uh, and the reason for that is because it's a bit of a trade-off. Um, because what I really wanted to do was make it semi-transparent, so you can click through it. Because I don't like that this is in the way of stuff. Uh, the game might be behind there and you just want to get to playing it, right? Uh, and so, I really wanted to make it semi-transparent, but the issue with that is that uh, WinForms doesn't allow you to have a semi-transparent label. Everything is just painted on top of each other, so you can't actually set the alpha of this. What you're meant to do in order to create a transparent, uh, to create the illusion of transparency, is you have to open a new window that just, it doesn't have any border, it just has that control in it. And then you can set the transparency of the window. But <clears throat> the issue with that is that we're in full screen, and one thing that I wanted to do, and I'll explain in more detail how this is accomplished in a future video, is just I wanted to make it so that if you alt-tab something else, uh, like for example uh, Visual Studio in this instance, then this will duck out of the way, right? See, uh, it, it just uh, instantly gets out of the way because that's what full screen applications normally do. Uh, similarly, if you go up to the toolbar here and you choose to open a new window, uh, this will now exit full screen because it's kind of weird to have just a window on top of a full screen background. Like, that just felt kind of weird to me, and so just going off of, you know, how... Just going off of, like, the vibes of, of how weird, weird that felt, I decided if a pop-up window opens, it'll exit full screen. That way you'll kind of, you know, know what happens, and you won't be, like, dazed and confused that there's a pop-up window on top of a full screen background, right? Um, <clears throat> and so um, the issue with having the full screen label be in its own window is that it would trigger those, um, you know, uh, fallbacks, right? It would treat it as a new window, and so it would immediately exit full screen. And I didn't want to just make an exclusion for that one window, because that just seemed like it would be um, higher effort than I'm willing to go. So this was the trade-off, is uh, I know, you know that you might click on the page by accident and then uh, not see what the message said, but at the same time, I want people to have the convenience of making it go away if they just want to play their game uh, instead of waiting out three seconds. So that was kind of my um, <clears throat> in-between solution, was just as a compromise, if you interact with the page, it'll, it'll go away, because I can't make it semi-transparent. Um, <clears throat> there is one scenario where the full screen mode um, will allow a new window to open on top of it. And I'll give you a hint, right? If I go up here and press print, this will open the print dialog, and you'll notice it doesn't exit full screen, and this is not a bug. This is the intended behavior, and I'll give you a little hint why, right? If I click on the background here, it will not let me go back, and that's actually very important um, to the reason why this does not um, cause it to duck out of the way. Uh, but I will explain that in more detail later. Um, 
for right now, that's a pretty good overview of what the different browser controls do. Most of them are pretty basic with the exception of full screen. Um, and so, yeah, uh, that leads into a bunch of other topics uh, that I'll cover next. See you next time.